Yeah. No, for real. And I told you this story before. You know. Um, now, my point is that if people hear something that talks to their spirit, they will mm. go and purchase it. And if it's just one song and it alludes to the potential of how it could feed your spirit fully, mm. and I think people would want to go get that. So, based on Heaven Knows, did you buy my whole record? You couldn't buy singles back First then. of all, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna you, tell you should I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I never told you this before, but. And it really, for me, only happens probably every fucking 15 years. Right. When something comes on the You'd be waiting on, the on it, too. Man! You'd be waiting on it. It's either a video or on the radio. It was more so on the radio back in the day, but... Right. And it just makes you... For me, it confirms that there's a reason to have hope. Right. That's what happened to me when you played the uh, Salim for me. I was like, woo! Exactly. Was so when when I will never forget, it was 1990, mm-hmm. and I was coming off the road with uh, Martika at the time, and we was coming from Europe, and it was a car full of motherfuckers. Glad to be back home. I think I was 16. Oh my god! <laughs> 16, and first I thought it was Regina Bell, but. We had been doing things earlier that day before we landed. Well, first of all, when it was playing, I was just like, you know, Did you like the sound of the record, or was it the lyric, or? It was from the intro. All the vocals, yeah. From the intro, you know what I mean? It was the way the harmonies were displayed. It was then your tone and how you approached the verse, you know what I'm saying? And then it was the calling, you know what I'm saying? Like. It was it was a call out to something, somebody, whoever it was. It was a call. You know what I'm saying? And I heard it like most of us who love what you do heard it. So the shit is playing, and I'm in the car like, who the fuck is this? And I couldn't tell who it was. And it's, for a second, I'm like, is that Regina Bell? No, not Regina Bell. Because Baby Cut Me was nice. Oh, that was a jank. I like to make um, it like it was too. I kinda like that song. Yeah. Did he? Um so yeah. And every I made every yeah. I made <laughs> first of all, I told everybody to shut up in the car. And everybody was quiet. And everybody in the car, being singers and musicians as well, they were like, you know, everybody felt the same thing. So the minute that motherfucker was over, and he was like, that was Layla Hathaway. I asked the driver to go to Tower Records on Sunset. And oh, I asked her, I was like, y'all all right? If we go to Tower Records right now, everybody in the car bought the record. And they told me my record only sold 170,000 copies. Everybody bought the record. almost 20 years old. I know. It's crazy. And that was a cover song, you know that. Yes. That's but that song. Yeah, that was a good song. It saved my life. Really? At that time. Yeah, totally. Like, music tends to, for me. Mm-hmm. You know, and every now and then, like, when Misha came out with One Temptation in 88, oh, I love that record. you know, I was like, oh, shit. And then you came in 90, you know, and then Rochelle came yep. with Till You Come Back to Me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, okay, there's hope. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I was strung out on Carol Wheeler around that time. Exactly. Living in the Light. Yeah. Blue. All that. That was my jam. That album was off the chain. Yeah, it was. She's a Capricorn. Crazy. Absolutely. Ooh.